Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, well, we're in the, in the holidays, and as those are very festivity kind of, uh, of a moment, if you will, and I'm going to give you a very festivity treat today. <laughs> I've got two guys here sitting with me today. We're going to give you a treat. We're going to talk about politics a little bit. We're going to talk about the presidential election. We're going to talk about the wins and the losses. If you had the opportunity to meet the press, see meet the press and and so the CNN and Fox and whatever, if you could afford Comcast, <laughs> the majority of the people can't afford Comcast. It's very expensive. So what we're going to do, we're going to share it with you and bring it to you. As you know, we're we're very open. We're we're local television, whatever. And all due respect. You know, in fact, uh, many of you can't, uh, for those of you who can view us, fine, but if you don't have Comcast, you can't view us. So in the round there, we got to kind of help that out a bit, too. Please share this. But there is the Internet. Show. There, there's the You're internet. You're on YouTube. But there's the internet. There's mm -hmm. the internet. Comcast the charges you a lot of money for very poor. Internet as you can service. see, I'm not going to have any problem with co-hosts. They're all ready <laughs> here. We're all three co-hosts today. Anyway, again, again, as you notice, I, I still, I still don my cover. I, the, the Vietnam vet aspect of it, and vets, very, very important. Again, these guys are still sort of hanging back and not actually going in and and uh, verifying the fact and signing up, if you will, as a vet to receive your services. Very, very important. And by the way, if you've got family members that are a former military and aspect, a lot of them don't want to chat or whatever, please get them down to the VA and so they can get those uh, those benefits. They are, they're, they're definitely in need of the deserve, especially the Iraqi, the young folks today. I call them Iraqi, call them millennium types of military, as opposed to uh, as opposed to myself, not opposed to myself, but comparable to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a Vietnam vet and I've been around for a couple of days. Okay, yeah. and the still, Afghan rebels. Oh, yeah, Afghan I mean, rebels. But we got, but there's a lot of problems. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of issues yeah. and whatever. But anyway, what we're going to do today, like I said, we're going to we're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the presidential race. Um, unfortunately, unlike uh, the Trump situation right now, who is the is the apparent he, he is the apparent winner. And he, he's going to he's going to be president elect come January aspect of it, and, but the fact of the matter is he's so in, he's so aggressive and the guy is right out there. I mean he he's now actually he is the president. And you know we have a we have a we have another president who probably won't be there after January. But the fact I'm talking about the, our president, the present president, uh, President Obama aspect of it. But the fact of the matter is we, we got a hard charge. He hasn't stopped yet. I mean, from day one he got involved in this process. Unlike the state of Oregon, unlike the city of Portland. We've got uh, a, a, a mayor that's going to be coming in. His name is Ted Wheeler, who's who's a former treasurer. Mm -hmm. He's a treasurer right now. He's also a former uh, Multnomah County commissioner. Right, 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 right. It's going to be very interesting. But he's not acting like the Trump. See, I mean, I, I would have liked him, him to have gotten involved, if you will, in the whole issue of homelessness and, and the police aspect and whatever. He's just stayed out of the whole real. It's very interesting. I think the only thing he's done is tweet that Portland's going to be a sanctuary city. Yeah, was that? quite the opposite of what the incoming presidential administration probably wants to hear from its mayor's yeah, elect. Kidding. Well, not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of, I don't remember who it was, but there was a city councilor who did a press release right after Trump's election who had just went into histrionics about it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it was. I don't remember. I wish I could remember who it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's see, folks. This, okay, this is a general discussion aspect of it. I've got Scott right here on this other end. We've got Richard Burke mm -hmm. on this other end here. And we're just going just gonna to get right on in there and try to see if we can just just very, uh, very get you involved in the process aspect of it. Because there's been, there's been so much negatives, if you will, mm -hmm. of folks who are just sitting around the table doing their own thing, if you will, and really not thinking about what. The, what what the masses are thinking about and what their concerns are. The masses are thinking about one thing, guys. And I'll just throw it right out there. Hey, I got to eat. I don't mm -hmm. have any jobs. I mean, I mean, right up front with you, have people that being uh, our jobs are going into other countries, if you will. That whole trade thing and this, that, and the other. People want to know what, how, how can I feed my family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can I do? What about getting the, an education for my kids? But again, after they've gotten the education, where are they gonna where are they gonna work? Right. And where are they gonna eat? You know. So, so anyway, so we want to just kind of like just talk to you from a layman's standpoint. That's what it's all about. Let's really get down to it. So, Scott, let's get uh, let's talk a little bit about this whole issue about the what do you, what do you think about the election, the results of the election? Well, right before the election mean? was the last time I made an appearance on here, and yeah. you asked us to make predictions about yes. the outcome, and I, I I didn't, I couldn't. I was actually quite surprised to see him win. Well, we uh, did. 
He's both been calling it yeah. for months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because did, yeah. Richard had been around in Minnesota to watch Jesse Ventura be elected governor. And, uh, you know, all along we've said the polling was wrong because the polling only traditionally does likely voters. Yeah. That's yeah. not who put Donald Trump right. over the top. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Well, again, we were fortunate to have Richard because, in all due respect, uh, the Trump folks basically picked him. They say, okay, fine. They, they just kind of, I know he, he was very very active. And we want to thank you very much for being with us that, that thing day because we were able to get us some insight with, with regards to what the campaign was about as far as Trump was concerned. Fair? I, I think that that's fair. You know, my yeah. situation was a little unusual because yeah. I'm not a Republican. Right. I'm, a, I'm a libertarian. Right. right, right. And I saw the Trump campaign as uh, doing several things at once. I saw it as, as breaking apart the establishment as it was, Mm -hmm. but also I saw it as opening a door for the larger libertarian movement Mm -hmm. to come and make itself seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think both of those things happened. Uh, I think um, because Trump was nominated, it gave uh, an opening for the libertarian movement and uh, folks like Gary Johnson to come and make their case. I don't think it would have worked as well if it had been Jeb Bush Mm -hmm. or Ted Cruz, fewer mm-hmm. people would have taken a look mm-hmm. around. But as it was, given the major party candidates, I was completely uh, behind Trump because mm-hmm. we do need to break that establishment. Mm-hmm. I think that's what uh, a lot of other people felt. Mm-hmm. I did think he was going to win because of the dynamic that I thought was similar to the Jesse Ventura for mm-hmm. governor race mm-hmm. in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. But the, or even the Schwarzenegger recall in California. That's right. there for mm-hmm. that. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the Democrats, I think, where they fell down is, I don't know who said it, I, I wish I could quote them, but they've become a regional party that has painted itself into a corner with identity politics and sort of uh, an ideological fervor that is not relatable to people who are actually trying to survive and feed their families. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You've got gays and blacks and yeah, yeah. Hispanics, and the the Democrats all kind of try to get them angry as a group. Mm-hmm. And they fight against the establishment like many of us do, but they also end up fighting each other. Mm-hmm. And anger is not an inspirational force. But why do we hmm, why like do we that. why do we group these these individuals in this kind of this situation? Why do we do that? Why why didn't we do? It? Is this something that media maybe put that together? Or, well, I don't think I don't life? think we do it. I think that that people on the left do it. Okay. And the, because it's worked for them. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, yeah, the media is complicit in that because the media is complicit in it because they like conflict. The media likes conflict. Conflict sells papers. Oh, yeah, conflict attracts viewers. And identity politics is tailor-made to provide conflict. Yeah. And what it does is it creates anger and fires people up and makes people f- get mad because they feel marginalized. And that's why the Democrats like it. Mm-hmm. I think those of us who are libertarian, um, and even many of us uh, who might describe themselves as conservative, they see us as Americans mm-hmm. first. And you might have a particular heritage, you might have a particular orientation or proclivity, but you're an American first. Mm -hmm. And that is the message that Ronald Reagan had. To a lesser extent, that's the message that the Bushes had, although I don't think they performed on it as well. And that's the message that Trump had. And that, I think, it was an inspirational message. We're going to take our power back. We're going to take our country back. Mm-hmm. And some of that's rhetoric, but some of it rang true. And use these other cultures and other entities. And, and not yeah. play ourselves off against each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, and the Democrats, they just lived on it. Mm-hmm. And it didn't work for them. And mm-hmm. they're sticking with it. Look, they reelected Nancy Pelosi. Mm-hmm. You know, and I guess one third of And, and the, Republicans are thrilled. They are. <laughs> it's, you know, one third of the Democratic caucus in the House comes from three states. And it's New York, California, and Florida. And that tells you, and this is what I wish I could remember who said it, the Democrats are becoming a coastal party. They're not so much a national party now, they're a coastal party. Well, and and even there, the Northeast, they lost ground there. They They lost lost governorships in the Northeast. They lost legislative chambers in the Northeast. But let's not forget about the base of the Democratic Party. You still got the young folks that are sitting there, the millennials. They didn't show up. They just sit there. No, the the rationale is that the, 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 I call them millennium seniors, (laughs) didn't allow them to show up. You got it? Because in all due respect, the the way it was pretty well laid out, it was the the year of the woman. 
Yeah. Well, it was the year of the woman. That, I mean, did, that they, didn't work, though. No, but, my point is, but, the, but the pick of the woman, that's, that's yeah. a whole different ball game. I mean, they, they, had, they had some pretty viable candidates that were sitting out there. Yeah. But naturally, the Clintons pretty had, had, again, they were part of that so-called millennium seniors aspect mm -hmm. of it. They had that control aspect of One it. of the things that hurt her, and we saw this all along, was an enthusiasm gap. Mm -hmm. And by and large, I think the people who supported Barack Obama initially still do. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. Where you get into trouble is where the people who supported you don't anymore. And e even among a lot of the key Democratic groups and demographics, you know, the, the turnout among African-American voters mm -hmm. for Hillary Clinton, nowhere near what it was for Barack mm -hmm. Obama. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you watch over the next 12 years, I think you're going to see a significant percentage of the millennials abandon the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. These are young people who are going to start building wealth in their lives. They're going to buy houses. They're going to have families. They're going to start businesses. Mm -hmm. I was a Democrat until I formed a business, mm -hmm. right? The millennials are going to have this too, and I think you're going to see some of the millennials begin to walk away from the Democrats. And you might see the same thing with minorities too. Yeah. Uh, based on Trump's cabinet pick for director of education, what's clear is that they want to do something different. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that conservatives have to offer to minorities that Democrats can't and never will. Mm -hmm. And that's education mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the Democratic establishment for decades, you, know, you got these wealthier guys who send their kids to private schools who don't want minorities to have that same opportunity, who keep mm -hmm. them trapped in failed schools that aren't even safe, mm -hmm. and that here in Portland, had lead in the drinking water that administrators sure. knew about and didn't do anything about in yeah. crumbling old buildings. Uh, the Democrats are the ones keeping you there. It would be and great. the extent to which they communicate that message and to which they can provide those initial opportunities to minorities mm -hmm. and allow them that shot at the American dream, I think they would, you know, if they end up doing that, then the minorities will abandon the Democrats in droves, and they know it. Well, you know, I, I would think that, again, at the same time, I agree with you, in that, in that, but from a traditional standpoint, yes, minorities, the definition of minorities, women, African Americans, Asians, Hispanics, LGBT. I mean, right, uh, yeah, LBGT, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other, and excuse the print, then you got the white male just sitting over here by themselves. Yeah. And we, we, we've kind of put that culture together aspect of it, and then they've been used. A lot of and I think they're starting to realize that. And, mm -hmm. and the Republicans, in a way, have themselves to blame for the fact that they haven't reached out to them. But what you do is you say, okay, what's in it for me? Yeah. Right? You say yeah. education choice, entrepreneurship, home ownership, the American dream, in other yeah. words. The Democrats don't even pretend to do that. Yeah. Well, they're we'll keep you failed, you know, trapped in failing schools, mm -hmm. yeah. keep you in HUD housing as opposed to owning your own home, keep you on food stamps and welfare as opposed to owning your own business. Yeah. I think they need to do a better job of reaching out to minorities and, and expressing that message. We want you mm -hmm. to have the American dream. Yeah. The These other guys don't. And the, the Ameri and the American dream is, uh, where's my food? Where's my plate? <laughs> I got to eat. Well. I've so, got to eat. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know that that's the American dream. I think that's what everybody well, what wants. what is it? Huh? I think the American dream is uh, a level above that. A level above that. I think, I think that everybody wants to eat. Break it down. Um, but I think <laughs> what makes America different and what okay. makes the American dream different, it's okay. like, okay, yes, we need to eat, but I want to do better than that. I want to have a business. I want to own a home. Okay. I want to have, create wealth and pass it I on to I want to create kids. wealth, pass okay. on to my kids. Okay. I want to have a good retirement. I mean, folks who live in Liechtenstein, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they don't necessarily have the American dream, but they want to eat, yeah, right? Yeah. That's something we all have <laughs> yeah. in common, you know, the Liechtenstein dream. So, yeah, right? I, I hear you on that. I, I want to do more than just eat, and yeah, I kind of right, feel right. like I've spent most of, the last, most of the last years, last eight years, just surviving, just scraping okay, by. Right, it's it's right, important, right, though. Right. It, an important point, though, is I think a lot of these groups over time are going to walk away from the Democratic Party if the Democrats don't adapt. And at present, they're not adapting. But that does not mean that they're going to go to the Republican yeah, Party. Right, right, right. We have to remember that among the millennials, a third of the millennials in this election voted third party. So they may not go to the Republicans unless the Republicans take advantage. They, they have a, a, a window during which they could redefine themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they'll redefine themselves in a libertarian direction. I don't know if they will. Okay, talking then, listen, then express that in, in, in reference to Donald Trump, Donald Trump the developer business person, and Hillary Clinton, the Clintons. Let's talk about both of those different groups. How do you how, do, how does that compare? I, 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 let me throw something out on the table. Let's put it this way: What if Hillary Clinton, the Clintons, if you will, had had gotten away from that nonprofit piece? Mm -hmm. You got pay to play type routine. <clears throat> the first day, so to speak, would it would it have been a different race? 
Would it have been a different race? I think ultimately what sank her towards the end was a combination of a couple of things. Was One it? was the last bombshell about the FBI investigation coming up again. The it happened, momentum. It happened too late for her to effectively counteract it. That's right? And okay, all the money in the world to buy advertising okay. at that point okay. where you're days away from the election. Okay. The other thing was the premium, in, the insurance premium increases. I saw a map of that when it came out. And a lot of the, the bigger percentage increases were in some of these swing states. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, 30% increase in these states that she absolutely must win. Something like that, I think, is enough to put people over the top when you're hitting them directly in the pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. And while Clinton could have made the claim that, well, I, I, was, I didn't vote for that, I would have done it differently, I'm yeah. the one to fix it, the fact of the matter remains that her party owned it completely. Mm -hmm. you know, they called it the Affordable Care Act. Healthcare is not more affordable than it was. Mm -hmm. It's gone the opposite direction, and there's a difference. So far, I'd r I'd rather pay the penalty. And a lot mm -hmm. of people are. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can brag, say, "Oh, we've increased coverage." Well, of course you have. You've made it illegal to not have insurance mm -hmm. for the most part. But the people that do have it, just because you have insurance, doesn't mean that you have health care. Yeah. These are two completely right, different right, things, right, right. right? And a lot of people that I know have seen their premiums go up. They've also seen their deductibles go up. And here's the fact of the matter. If your deductible is $6,000, the average person doesn't have $6,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, so you have health insurance in so that case, but you don't have health care. Okay. Right. Yeah. Unless you get hit by a truck and you've got a major hospital mm -hmm. stay, you can't mm -hmm. use the insurance. But at the same time, you know, when you start thinking about the little people down below with reference to health care, it doesn't cost them anything. You can walk in any hospital you want to. They've got to serve you. Point well, blank. Well, they're not going to let you die. I mean, well, and, and that was part of it. And it it this is what happens when you pass a piece of legislation affecting an industry that's one fifth of your nation's yeah. economy, and you don't read the bill first. Yeah. They could have taken an extra week. They could have actually read the bills. I read the bills. My boss reads the bills. Mm -hmm. His boss, you know, his wife reads the bills. Her staff reads the bills. Yeah. We read the bills before we vote on them because that's the way you're supposed to do well, things. Look, they never addressed hospital pricing. And that's been a huge issue, even especially here in Oregon, where you have some areas like uh, in Bend in Central Oregon, where the providers are becoming vertically integrated, and they can pass those costs on to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And the insurance companies, uh, we've had that issue too, where some of our largest counties, like Lane County, Deschutes County, mm -hmm. you have fewer providers than you had before, mm -hmm. because these big companies and the insurance commissioners and regulators in this state weren't expecting this. They thought that these providers would be either all in or all out as opposed to cherry picking mm -hmm. markets that they will mm -hmm. serve. Mm -hmm. And that's been devastating for the people in the rural areas. They have fewer choices than they did before. But, but you know, at the same time, at the same time, the, the majority of the public or the voting public aren't privy, if you will, to the conversation that we're having right now. Let me speak well, that's why to I'm hoping they tune in. That. No, that's my point. <laughs> it's still meat and potatoes. I still go back to meat and potatoes. Let again, me, let me speak to that, okay? Oh, yeah. Let me speak to the heart of this. Here's the difference I see fundamentally between Trump and Clinton. Okay. Okay. Donald Trump, he is not consistent. He likes the free market, but he likes protectionism. I mean, he's got some contradictions in some of his positions. Okay. However, his basic central premise is that wealth and prosperity do not come from government. Mm -hmm. They come from enterprise. They come from small business people. Investment. They come from people who are working and investing. Clinton um, acknowledges that you've got to have some of those things, but she believes that wealth and prosperity come from the government. And the government and the public sector dispense these things. Well, and that's the Barack Obama, you didn't build that. That's the Barack that's Obama, you didn't build that. So that's what I think it is, is. You know what he built? The greatest Republican majorities we've seen nationwide since 1928. <laughs> and, and, so, and so he built that. Hillary is saying, we will take care of you we are the um, depository of solutions. You know, elect us, put us in charge, and we will manage your lives in a collective way that is good for America. Right, and, and this is the same woman who wrote a book called It Takes a Village, as in... That's right. It Maybe takes it a village to raise a child and people as have had parents. eight years of that, and it didn't work, and people see themselves losing control of their lives and their communities and their lands. And Donald Trump is saying... All right, we need government, maybe more government than libertarians are comfortable with, but government is not the source of good, okay? You are the source of good. Okay. The people who are working out there in the factories and who are starting the businesses and who are creating wealth, that is the good, and that is government's job to provide an environment 
within which you can thrive. Mm -hmm. I think that people, as they did with Reagan, respond instinctively to that idea. They, they, they may not be able to articulate it, but they know the difference between someone saying, we're here to help you and we know what's good for you, and you know what's good for you, we're here to provide an environment and get out of your way. I think that is the core of Trump's appeal, that people saw that approach breaking down the fences that they felt themselves corralled in. Mm -hmm. They wanted those fences broken. And they saw Donald Trump as well. But don't you think, though, that Trump recognized the, the, the issue that we're having today in regards to identifying with that, with that, with that part of the, that part of our society, mm -hmm. the little folks. I call them the little folks aspect of it. Uh, the, the working man. The, the, the working, That's a part the of it. Man, That's a part the, of it. The, the working man. Because when you think about it, why would someone in his position, you know, in the stature that he had at this point, why should he get out there and get all these hits? And he, that's it's one of the things that helped put me over the top for him was the fact that he was putting his neck on the line, his business, his reputation, his mm -hmm. livelihood. But he was identifying, though, with the little guy. That, and that, somehow better base, able to do it than her. And that, that's one thing that I think has been troubling in the weeks since the election is that it, it's widely assumed that everybody who voted for Donald Trump was racist. I, I imagine that would include mm -hmm. the minorities that voted for him, well, because guess what? There were a lot well, of well, them. It, it's been right? said that the whole issue of race, in all due respect, let's respect the, the president, President Obama, regardless. We needed to talk about the issue of race. I mean, for the for the last eight years, we did talk about race. And race relations are and, worse than they've been in decades. No, no I, I still yeah. think that people are aware of what's going on. I mean, all these, <laughs> we have to deal with the issue. I mean, I, I really was on that point. We, because before that happened, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. You couldn't say anything. At least people are talking now about this issue. The key is, that where do we go from here? But see, now, I think race, the race card worked a whole lot better when it was Barack Obama who was running. And I was like, wait a minute. So I didn't vote for a wealthy white woman who's mm -hmm. the wife of a former president, so that makes me racist, right? Mm -hmm. I think people don't quite make that connection. Yeah. But you know, look, at the end of the day, where Hillary Clinton lost this race was in the Rust Belt. And yeah. we'd said all along right. that that was one of the potential strengths. Now, what is strengths. the Rust Belt? Now, that make sure we, we That's the Midwestern the, the, states. And okay. I think his selection of Indiana Governor Mike Pence, vice Pencil president, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Michigan, Ohio, Michigan. all these states Wisconsin, that had yeah. gone Democrat the last few cycles in the Midwest the, the, that used to be the backbone of industry in this country mm -hmm. that have seen their fortunes and their communities dwindle after the North American Free Trade Agreement that Bill Clinton signed into law, mm -hmm. right? It, because you remember the phrase post-industrial economy that was thrown a lot out a lot during the, the first Clinton administration. And that was what they were trying to get you used to. You look at some of the movies that were coming out during then, uh, everyone's working at a dot-com startup, right? They thought, yeah. they honestly thought that everybody at this point in time would be working at some dot-com company. And that mentality devastated Oregon as our industrial sectors were effectively shut down and, and the leftists told us, well, that's okay, you've got tourism. Right. You know, uh, which works three months out of the year. Go in to places John like, Day. Right. In Cave Junction and in, uh, for a crater like National Park. Yep. These are treasures. You, you, there's nothing else like them anywhere else on Earth. You can't physically get there most of the year because there's like 20 feet of snow. Yep. Right? It's just not realistic. But, but let's get back to that point that Scott brought up. You know, under our present system, if you will, the Electoral College is the one that elects the president. Yeah. And, and as you say, that those particular states that you're talking about, that's where the majority of the electoral votes are. You got me? Yeah. And the populist votes is all over. You got California, you got, mm -hmm. I mean, you got Texas and this, that, and the other. And things are changing in those respective areas. Sure. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, that's what, that's basically, they did not spend the time. And I mean, Bill Clinton, media, Bill Clinton was apparently telling Hillary's campaign that whole time, hey, you should spend more time in the Midwest. But so. CNN was saying, no, it's already, it's over. Well, and from what I've read, the the Clinton campaign knew they were in trouble in Michigan and that there was a chance that they could lose Michigan. Very they late. didn't want to acknowledge it publicly. That's what kept her from making appearances there because she knew that if she did that, people would say, well, what's she doing in Michigan? But we knew because uh, the guy who was directing the Trump campaign here in Oregon is a friend Jacob of ours. Jacob Daniels. Mm -hmm. And he ended up shutting down operations here and going over to Michigan. And what happened was you had about a thousand Trump volunteers here in Oregon who were calling into Michigan. That helped swing that state. Mm -hmm. It was actually people from here in Oregon, conservative activists in Oregon, mm -hmm. that helped yeah. win Michigan. Call fire. Yeah. But then yeah. let's go back again. When we first, when we first started out, the whole idea is that 
what was her definition, if you will? What was her platform? And what was Trump's platform? Her platform, as far as the D, she basically lost quite a bit on the whole issue of the trade piece. From mm -hmm. day one, the, the whole idea is that hell no, we're gonna we're gonna send the, we're gonna continue sending, if you will, the jobs out to these other countries. I think that she basically wrote off uh, the working class and the white males, and was looking to maximize turnout among the coalition of maligned groups. Yeah, but what about the trade? The, all, the, all of the unions and this, that, no. It, those, it was the that, rank and file those unions. Are males there, big time. That, that's mm -hmm. a, and she, she, but she couldn't win them because they're, they're, her policies and the policies of Barack Obama have not served them. So they couldn't, it would have been fruitless for him for her to go there. But then you start thinking about that particular policy. You start thinking about Bill, how, how Bill had pretty well structured that you have to pay to play aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You got my point? He was making deals, if you will, with these other nations, if you will, from the yeah. standpoint of saying, hey, look here, I tell you what, just, you just keep feeding up my little organization aspect of it, and we're going to guarantee those jobs are going to come to your nation. Blah, blah, blah. And so basically she had to follow the script. Fair? I th it would have been hard for her to criticize yeah. the North American Free Trade Agreement, and Trump didn't directly do it as much as I oh, think he, did. he, he could have. Well, oh, he, did. he did it in more of a roundabout way, because I would have taken more of that approach of, hey, remember that free trade agreement that her husband signed into law 20 yeah, years I mean, ago? That, that, that was yeah. major, because people weren't eating down here. And, and it was all about the rank-and-file union guys in states like Pennsylvania, Ohio, yeah, and these Wisconsin, were these. because these were these. their union bosses were still advocating for Clinton, telling people yeah. to vote for That's Clinton, right. these but these, these guys, the dues-paying members of these unions voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. I think that the, at the risk of sounding a little black helicopter is here, <laughs> globalists in like the 60s and the 70s and maybe even the 80s, they wanted to redistribute wealth through foreign aid, foreign aid projects. I think uh, globalists learned after that that if you want to redistribute wealth, the way to do it is with through jobs. the Clinton Foundation? Through, through the jobs. You break down the barriers, you break down trade tariffs, and then uh, investment goes where labor is cheap, and that is a far more effective way to redistribute wealth than writing checks for foreign aid ever mm -hmm. was. And mm -hmm. you heard Hillary say in that private meeting that she wanted to eliminate all borders in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. and she wanted open immigration in the Western Hemisphere. That reflects that globalist perspective. And you know, once that cat's out of the bag, there's no way you can go mm -hmm. to a miner in West Virginia mm -hmm. and say, Look, you know, be my friend. It just mm -hmm. is impossible. Well, w when you say outright, we're going to shut down the industry that has built and maintained your state mm -hmm. for generations. Yeah, they, they've lost those states. West Virginia was a Democratic yeah. state. Mm -hmm. The Kentucky legislature, which, which has been dominated by Democrats forever. She has, was a horrible candidate. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I just... She was a horrible candidate, and I just don't understand some of these second-wave feminists who just yeah. bristled against anyone who doesn't support her because she's a woman, that they could not put up somebody better. I think if they would have put up somebody like Joe Biden... Oh, I think Joe Biden would have done great. I but think what he happened would have, to he the woman? I mean, I'm still going back to the same thing. Elizabeth, 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 Elizabeth was, Warren probably would, would have done better. Uh, that, been, was their, yeah. that was their day. That was there. It day. could have been, but they chose a poor standard bearer. Okay, good. Okay, but well, think was, about yeah. this though. Before the election, everyone was talking about how the, the Republican Party was dead, and going to be dead, and now the exact opposite mm -hmm. conversation has happened after the they election. They never die. They just yeah, morph but, like but, some but, Star but, Trek characters. But let's not forget. <laughs> let's not forget. Donald was not a Republican. He was an outsider. Yeah, he's not a. He, well, he he's not, not a he's, Republican. He's, he's not even to this well, day. Well, he's a lot not of, a conservative, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, a different yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Your last two Republican presidents before him had the same name and were, were from the same family, and they were globalists too, and they were supporting Hillary Clinton, yeah. publicly and otherwise. Yeah, the, 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 when you say you're I make that point because that's exactly where he was. He was kind of even to this date his, his position is that hey, look, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue with my platform. I think the biggest challenge the Republicans have as a group right now is that they have no definition. If you say to somebody, "What party are you?" and they say, "I'm a Republican," you don't have a really very good idea of mm -hmm. where they mm -hmm. stand. Mm -hmm. Are they a George Bush Republican? Are they a Rand Paul Republican? Are they a Mike Huckabee Republican? Are they a Donald Trump Republican? Mm -hmm. You have to ask two or three more mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Now, the Democrats, they've got that same problem to a lesser degree, but uh, there's an identity crisis going on with both of the major yeah. parties, yeah. and uh, they will uh, fracture unless they 
come to grips with it. Right. That's right. true, and I've always viewed the Republican Party as a collection of different groups, right? Yeah. You've got the yeah. fiscal conservatives, you have the military guys. The social conservatives. The libertarians. Yeah. The government Republicans. And the big business Republicans. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's all, and sometimes, depending on the issue, these guys are at odds, especially mm -hmm. the libertarian wing and the social conservative wing, where they can agree maybe on the role of government, but then you get into social issues and forget about it. On that yeah. particular name, he said forget about it, but I got to still eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, we're well, in the social gotta, issues at their core are economic issues. We gotta stick, we're gonna take a short break. As you can see, here, we're still we're still voting. We're still we're still in the we're campaign. Still right? okay, we're still voting. Okay, we're still there. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome again, again, the Oregon Voters. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And as you can see, uh, for those of you who are with us at first 30 minutes, uh, it's still we're still sort of in a confused state. People are still sort of excited about the fact, where do we go from here? What in the hell are we going to do here? And it took this one outsider to come in and hit both parties right between the eyes, mm -hmm. and he comes in with an inside straight. Mm -hmm. He does. I mean, mm -hmm. Imagine the name Trump. Huh? If you're playing bed with... If you're, he I remember the, the board game. You remember that one? Yeah, the, I mean, you Trump know, the hey, board game. <laughs> this is this is this is just this is phenomenal, you know. And he he's, and he has a, he had an impact on the entire country, all the races for that matter. Mm -hmm. and that even true. in the in Oregon, for that matter, we had we had issues with Oregon. I mean, for the first time around, we had a we had a well, you got we had Dennis Richardson mm -hmm. who, who picked up uh, Secretary of State. That's a big and, win. First statewide Republican and, elected and, since two thousand two. And then there was this that there was this other um, uh, was it was a bill that was out there. That was going to, I mean, 97? the 97, Belt measure 97 and that, that was, went that down. Was, and I, that was the money that went down. It took a lot of money to beat that. Yeah, though. but the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is, you know, but, but it, it, let's say for instance, it, it can't come around again. My point is that if, if it comes back around, it may be a whole different ball game. Well, and I can speak to that. The governor held a press conference. Uh, Sorry about that, folks. You pretty well know that. For the guys who, for the folks who weren't there at the first period, we got Scott here, Scott Jurgensen, and then we got Bill. Bill oh, Rich Burke. Rich, Bill's Rich, close. Rich Burke. Rich Burke. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's right. As you can see, I'm still in a, in a slate. I'm still kind of on it. But anyway. But Bob, you, as you were saying, Scott? The governor uh, did a press conference late last week, and she released her budget proposal. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because it, you hear about all these drastic cuts, but then you say, well, wait a minute, this budget's still 9% more than the budget was last biennium. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact still remains that the state of Oregon has more revenue coming into it than at any point in its history. That's mm -hmm. a fact. That's straight from the le legislative A lot of current office. service level stuff, I suppose. Yeah, there's some of that. Uh, mm -hmm. And it also included uh, closing the mental health facility in Junction City that mm -hmm. we just spent a lot of money on that just opened. It, it kind of reminds me of the Wapato. Right. Wapato, Wapato, yeah. Yeah, same here in Portland, where they spent yeah. a fortune on it, yeah. and no prisoner has ever right. spent yeah. a single evening exactly. inside that facility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's very disappointing. But I think the, the fight over Measure 97 isn't over. It isn't coming back. During the press conference, Governor Brown acknowledged, because one of the reporters asked her, and she said, well, in all fairness, the ballot measure that I endorsed went down in flames. So mm -hmm. th there's some political reality, but... It's going to be the same thing that happens every legislative session, where the Ways and Means Committee is going to take a traveling roadshow, and at every one of these public meetings, you're going to have people who are dependent on you know state tax dollars show up and plead poverty, and you know the elderly and the children, and everyone's going to suffer because we're not you know raising taxes. So that dance who is about to said begin. Who was Grandma in the snowbank? <laughs> <laughs> well, look. I guess the only thing I, only thing I, 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 I luckily I first, there's no snow here. Yeah, the only right. thing that I sort of, you know, I heard the resonating piece in regards to Governor Brown aspect of it was the fact that this one, one of the first LBGT governor in the in the country, 
Uh, I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. in terms of how that was laying. So what's going to happen this next time around? She's up I for re-election immediately. I think, yes, I think right Bud's going to have quite a chance. I, 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 he was a good candidate, Bud Pierce. Uh, Bud Pierce was a good candidate. And as far as I'm concerned, he may, he may even do something. It's going to come down to who can raise the money. It's always about the money, isn't it? It's well. You have to project your message out there, and if you can't reach people, you're not going to get yeah, them to if, vote for you. But if you had media, that's the whole idea. I mean, the yeah. money is for media. That's all it is. It's for media, but the my, my point yeah. Today, I mean, Donald Trump got away with it because he was already a celebrity. And he was already he was a, a celebrity. news magnet. Exactly. Well, and you look at how much he was outspent. You know, I mean, Democrats have been complaining about the Supreme Court decision. Oh, she had Citizens the money. United. She had the money. Yeah, she had and that's that's exactly money. where I'm going with this. Money. Big money lost big in this election. Well, if you look money. at the primary and the amount of money that Jeb Bush and all these other candidates were throwing at Trump still didn't work. You look yeah, at the yeah. general election, yeah. she outspent him, yeah. she had more field staff, yeah. she had, she bought more airtime everywhere. Uh, he was outspent There's greatly. I, I've never seen any so much money it, being fact, spent trying to defeat one person yeah. and have them yeah. still prevail. In fact, it didn't work by such a degree that it was just almost wasted. It didn't you might as well make, set all that money on it fire. It didn't even yeah. make a dent in most cases. It helped. And at the end of the day, I think that's what that's what helped put Donald Trump over the top was a lot of people looked at who's supporting him, but more importantly, who's opposing them. Well, the banksters, the big banks were supporting Hillary Clinton. Yeah. The war profiteers were supporting well, Hillary Clinton. At, at the end of the day, that's where that money was coming from. Nobody said it. anything about Bernie Sanders. What if what if Bernie Sanders had been the, been he the, the nominee? He, he was too goofy out there. I think there would have been... An, I think through other strategies, mm -hmm. he would have been marginalized mm -hmm. and shown to be eccentric. Right. Well, and you look at that, uh, Bernie Sanders endorsed Measure 97 here in Oregon. So did Elizabeth Warren. It, it went down in flames, 40%. That right? was a lot of money, though. That it, was a lot of money, Scott. It, it, that, that was, mm -hmm. that they, was they just here well, in Oregon. They pretty well so. closed the door on media. Well, well as far as voting he, public. Mm -hmm. But remember, they at one point, that, that measure was did. up. It was up in the polling, 60%. 60%. Mm -hmm. But the weakness there was that the more people knew about it, the less likely they were to support as it. As soon as you started telling people that the Legislative Revenue Office yeah. said it would well, cost it, a minimum it, exactly. of $600 a family, yeah. that, that's, yeah. vote yeah. switch from... Well, well and that Legislative Council had said you can't bind future legislatures. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. fact that you yeah. guys are saying it's going to go to all these services doesn't yeah. exactly okay. pan out. Okay. Maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. Ultimately, the legislature would have decided where that okay. money would okay. have gone, and people knew that. Good. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Now, we've been talking for the last 45, about 35, 40 minutes or so at this point in time, and we're still confused. <laughs> yeah, I'm not confused. Got, no, we're still confused. And it, and it took Donald <laughs> Trump it, it took Donald Trump to kind of open, up, open us up a bit to say, okay, fine, where do we go from here? We need leadership in this country. We need leadership. And so we're going to shift for a moment, and we're going to be more specific and be, i.e., to Oregon, if you will. And we need leadership in our state, big time, because we're all suffering all over the place for that matter. So I'm gonna we're gonna shift it over to another get this guy come up with another hat. I'm talking about Western Liberty Network. I had the good fortune to to be a part of the conference uh, this last time go around and and uh, I thought it was very exciting the opportunity to go and and listen to people who are, might be interested in running for office, knowing what to do, what to do if you did this, this, that, and the other. And I thought it was very exciting. And so I think that's the kind of thing that we need to focus on at this point in time, this next round, if you will. And so, Rich, we're going to we're gonna get you okay. out of here because you are Western Liberty Network, a very nonpartisan guy, but every so often he gets, to, he gets pulled in, like people like you and I, Scott, on, you know, whether it be the R's or the D. Well, he returns my calls. I guess. <laughs> well, he has to. I mean, but he's the leadership. But guy. I, but I okay. return his calls, too. Yeah, yeah, we, we call each other all the time. So let's talk about Western Liberty Network. I mean, you okay. know, bottom line. Western Liberty Network is a 501c3 nonprofit educational foundation. Um, we don't endorse... I've done some work independently of Western Liberty right. Network for some candidates. Referred to that a little because bit you earlier have to today. Because I have to eat. But Western Liberty Network uh, does not take positions on legislation, candidates, or ballot measures. Right. What we do offer is training to political activists on how to do a variety of things, how to take their power back, um, how to uh, take responsibility for their own governance where they live. And the core function is how to run for local nonpartisan office mm -hmm. school board water board fire board all of those things i personally i serve uh, as a commissioner in the tolton valley water district i see how important that is in uh, people's daily lives i'm also a member of the um, oregon ethics board mm -hmm. um, and i see how important that can be in terms of transparency and other issues if we're going to 
quote, take our country back, yeah, yeah. it's going to, it's not going to happen at the White House. That's important. Mm -hmm. Congress is important. Mm -hmm. The White House is important. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it doesn't matter, but I'm saying if we want enduring change, it has to be done at the grassroots. It All has politics to be done. is local. All mm -hmm. politics is local. We need to get people into these positions and start building cadres of skilled leaders, campaign managers, campaign volunteers, so that as they get moved into the system, moved into the system, uh, some of them will eventually run for something higher. Some of them will run, stay where they are. Some of them will drop out. But the idea is just keep getting more people trained and in the system mm -hmm. and get them to invest with their time in the democratic process where they live. And so we do this by offering affiliation to existing organizations. Mm -hmm. They might be local political clubs or Tea Party groups or whatever they are, and we offer them training. They're independent. They can do what they want. They're not chapters of WLN, mm -hmm. but we offer them training. And another part of the training is we do an annual conference that you've referred to mm -hmm. every January on the day before the Pro Bowl every year. And this year it is uh, at the Crown Center Hotel in Lake Oswego, just off of I-5. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a reception with live music and hot appetizers on the 27th, and then the conference takes place on the 28th. Mm -hmm. The theme of the conference is Take the Offensive. Uh, the website is westernlibertynetwork.org. Uh, the conference costs $50, and there are sponsorship opportunities. But anyway, um, Grover Norquist of the, Amer of the uh, National Taxpayers Union has said he's going to mm -hmm. participate. Mm -hmm. Steve Buckstein of the Cascade Policy Institute is going to. Scott here is going to. Rebecca Tweed, who ran the No on 97 campaign, is going to be there. Uh, Tim Canope, it looks like he's going to be at State Center, oh, going to be teaching the course. Uh, we have a lot going on, and we'll have all of these presentations. And we're you're going to be there, some, right, Bruce? Well, I'm going to be Bruce, there. Bruce yeah. is going to... They even have Donna Maxey there, you know, with Ray's out. That's we, great. We, yeah, we need Br to talk about this. Bruce, Bruce uh, was um, an important part of the last conference. He'll be involved in this conference. And um, we will be having breakout sessions along four tracks of instruction. Okay. The first track of instruction is how to get elected to local nonpartisan office. Great. Right. There'll be four courses on that. Another one will be how to impact the legislature and it'll be useful for impacting what happens at the Capitol, but also how to you know deal with local mm -hmm. policymakers, mm -hmm. city councils and such. The third one is going to be about charter schools and school choice right. and what's going to be yeah, happening in the future. And the fourth one is going to relate to the urban rural divide. That's and been a huge issue. Ways to bridge that. It's been a big yeah. issue. And uh, with, you know in, in the uh, assemblies, there are three assemblies, uh, where we'll have featured speakers, but we'll also have table topics mm -hmm. where, you know, folks debate. It'll yes. be like Dorchester, yes. only about issues that people care right. about. Right, right. You know, and so, uh, yeah, I saw that face. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were doing Dorchester and Salem from now on. Oh, yeah, they, they've done I'm on actually the looking coast. forward to that. That'll be, that'll be, they're going to make some changes to the format, and I'm looking forward to that. You know, I might add, I might add at this point in time, too, is that I really want to thank you for that, because when I first met Richard, when I first met Richard, he I said, met him. What kind another, of a nut is this? Another court, another, <laughs> and then he brought this That's piece on about. Say. I thought it was just an just an R side, very very ultimate conservative, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I I, I put a test on it. He said something about a scholarship. So I had interviewed uh, s several individuals, one of which uh, happens to be the president of the uh, of the Al Sharpton group in the state of Oregon. There's an Al Sharpton group in right. Oregon. That's right, buddy. There's an Al Sharpton. She's a, she's what, a dynamo. She's what, a dynamo. Do they raise money so you can pay us back taxes? No, no, no. She, no, no <laughs> what no, do they no. do? No, no, no. She's uh -huh. a dynamo. My point is that she's an organization. She, she's an organizer. She, and, but the fact of the matter is she wants to run for office. And so naturally, I just tested him out. I said, Rich, I need one of those scholarships. He said, well, I said, hey, what about this person who has, she happens to be the president of this organization, the Al Sharpton? Hey, Bruce, we, hey, we're a nonpartisan group. If she's interested, she's an activist, hell, yep. come, come on over. She went over, she was impressed, impressed to the point that she ran for office. Otherwise, she was having, she was skittish about it. But she, she ran for office, and she did well. She held her on, and so I want to thank you publicly. Well, they actually have a pretty good track fantastic. record of getting people elected. Over 85% well, of the so, candidates So whether you're a Democrat, whether you're independent, whether, mm -hmm. whether you're libertarian, whatever, you can come to this conference and pick up the kind of information that you're not just wasting your time. Yeah, the, information, the information is, is applicable awesome. to 
any race. Any race. Beautiful. Regardless of what Beautiful party piece. a person and, and in to. fact, one of my legislative so colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. One of my legislative colleagues, Mike Nearman, state representative Mike Nearman, got his start through organizations like Western Liberty Network. He was just a yeah. grassroots yeah. advocate. He was at our 2011 conference in Medford. Yeah. And, and so he ended he up becoming yep. chairman of the Polk County Republicans. And now he's a just got elected to a second term in the Oregon House of Representatives. So I think he's the highest ranking yeah. person mm -hmm. that's gone through. But, you know, but when you think training. about it, when you think about it, we were activists with our, with our own rights aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Normally it's just an OJT thing, on the job training. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go and run. You don't know what the hell you're doing. You're supposed to raise money. How do you raise money? Who's that, that's a course that we provide, how to yeah. raise your first $2,500. I won't be teaching it because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe, maybe I can sit in on yeah, that you, you one. sit in on the course. <laughs> sit in on the course. You'll learn something. Yeah. You know, please well, don't schedule Scott, it at the same time as you know, one of the ones you want me I can give you a little uh, training in that if you'd like to yeah, yeah, sponsor it. And so, right. you know, if you have a $100 sponsorship, I'll be happy to. I'm just showing you how to raise money. But no, but no, in all due respect, you know, we are at this point in time. We are in need of this. I mean, the entire country does. We just We're fortunate, if you will, to have Richard here. In the state of Oregon, well, and, and hopefully we can. I appreciate the, the accolades, but um, you know, the work that Scott does in the legislature and the work that you've been doing for decades. Yeah, but yeah, eclipses but, anything that I've done. But had we known known you early on, way back when, we'd probably be in the elected officials here. We'd be sitting out on the side, you know, trying to dictate some things. Well, it's really eat more pizza. Is that what it is? <laughs> but no, it's 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 really a it's really a worthwhile organization, and and if you are interested, uh, Western please, Liberty Network. Western Liberty Network dot org. If you don't yep. if you don't have your smartphone with you, a computer aspect of it, is there a phone number that one can call? You bet, uh, they can call and they will get me. The number is five zero three nine seven zero. 1876. So please give them all that number. Mm -hmm. And by the way, for those individuals, it's tax time right now. In all due respect, they're a nonprofit organization. That, you know, hey, in all due respect, they could use those dollars, if you will. We do have a support page on the website. You do have a support that. page? Yeah, I don't please. want to abuse yeah. that on your show. No, but, but, yes, but it's, it's no abuse. No, no, hey, you got to have something. <laughs> you got you to pay for the facilities, all this other good mm -hmm. stuff and whatever. And a lot of the folks there are still volunteers, but the bottom line, mm -hmm. you do need those resources if, in fact, you're going to be giving out scholarships. Well, we exactly. want to give out scholarships. Yeah, but provided, you know what I mean? So if, so yep. if there are folks out there that are mm -hmm. interested in getting some of these young activists back, I, I know a number of them here right in the Portland area. All you do is pick up the newspaper, pick up the Tribune, yep. the Willamette Week, and this, yep. that, and the other. And when I see these young people out there, in all due respect, I, I see these young people out there, whether it be whether it be for the Black Lives Matter, or whether it be the this or that, or, or whether it be for uh, with the demonstration downtown mm -hmm. aspect of it, I see these young people that are out there, you know, just going down the street, not really not understanding how to go to respond to the issues they are concerned with. Well, you need to be organized. You got me, and that's what that's what I, that's what I. You feel. need to be organized. And you need to have training. You have to have training on this aspect of it. Yeah, so, I'm giving a speech actually. I've got it all written and everything yeah, called yeah, well, Leadership so, of Yesterday, so, Today, so and Tomorrow. I sent you the yes. draft. Yeah. Yeah, this yes, is the one yes. that you're going to do at the yes, yes. conference. Yeah. It's going to be very... That's right. January 27 and 28 again, westernlibertynetwork.org. Uh, nobody's getting rich here. We just want to make our hotel bill, good, and good, uh, good, we'll be happy good, with that. Good, and good. Um, people can either sign on as an attendee, or if they can attend, or if they want to, they can be a sponsor. There are a lot of sponsorships available. And if they just want to support Western Liberty yeah. Network. And well, it's, it's always a great page. networking opportunity, too, <coughs> especially if you believe in the principles of the Constitution and limited government. There are good activists there that they're the movers and shakers on, on the grassroots movement. It's a good way to meet Well, folks. like I said, to me, it looks as if to say, it's like saying, you don't have billions. You, know, you're not, you, may, you may not be a Trump, but in all due respect, the valuable training that occurs at, at this conference, I think, is really will be worth your while. Because mm -hmm. many of you out there would like to run for office. I mean, you, you really want to do something, but you don't know how to do it. You know, I, and along those lines, I'd like to throw out another plug. We've got uh, committee days coming up at the legislature okay, here in a couple good, of please, weeks. Yes. And so I wanted to give some recognition to the Oregon Citizens Lobby. Okay. And the Oregon Citizens Lobby is another nonprofit organization. We that, work with them. Oh, is that mm -hmm. And their, their deal is to where the average person can be trained on how to analyze bills, how to effectively lobby the awesome. legislature, how to testify mm -hmm. in committee. And it dovetails some of what you guys and do. And Western Liberty Network is actually a member of the Oregon Citizens Lobby. Yeah, so they'll have a presence there. Mm -hmm. how, so do they access, how do they access that, that particular organization? They're online, too, so just look it up, just Google Oregon it. Oregon Citizens Lobby. Oregon, Oregon Citizens, Citizens Lobby. Mm -hmm. Not that, just call up the governor. They'll have a operator. presence there at the Capitol here in a couple of weeks during legislative days, and I always try to make it a point to pop in and say hi to those folks when I'm in oh, the building great. because I think that that level of participation 
position is critical. Uh, most of the lobbyists in that building are paid professional lobbyists, and it's really easy for our legislators to lose that perspective mm -hmm. of citizens. Mm -hmm. And there's that some building things that, time. that we have to look out for, too. There um, is a proposal on the ethics board. It's a legislative draft. Um, Speak up a little bit. Which I think is a little bit... Was it you, you, the first part of you? I'm on the state ethics board. I'm a commissioner. Oh, you're, on, oh, you're a commissioner now? Yep. They, oh, wow. They, for some wow. reason, they put me on the board. And there is a legislative draft, a transparency bill, where they want anyone who lobbies on a bill mm -hmm. to be able to say what bill they're voting or they're lobbying for, what bill they're lobbying against, and Good. a lot of other things. Great. And I, I don't have a problem with that with regard to professional lobbyists, mm -hmm. but citizen lobbyists could fall under this too well even it, it sounds like it could apply to constituents visiting from the district it could there are there are hour limits if you go i think it's 24 hours if you lobby more than 24 hours mm. you have to register as a lobbyist but i know a lot of citizens who are not professionals and right. it's not yeah. fair to call them professionals okay. well, especially spend more than 24 session. hours mm -hmm. you know if you sp if you go there 12 times for two hours a pop you're at the limit. Yeah. They're at right? the space of a six month legislature. If session, they don't know if they don't know, then they get into issues. And, and if in uh, fact they've got something that might be of importance. Of all the ethics reform that needs to happen, I don't I don't know how that got to the top of the list. I mean there's stuff that we've pro been I've proposed in the last on few it. sessions. I'm a very junior member of of the board, but I've offered some comments on that and some places where they might want to cut back on some things without and, and they which they could do without compromising mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the integrity of the of the process. Uh, but uh, I think we have to be very careful that... I, I remember when I was working in the legislature, I would see legislators look at people who wanted appointments, and they would go through the contributions of their hmm. campaign and their mm -hmm. opponents, mm -hmm. and said, hmm, they gave my opponent $1,000. I'm not going to meet with them, mm -hmm. right? This is the downside of campaign finance reporting. It mm -hmm. happens a lot. And I think you would see more of that if you could take a look and say, oh, this person lobbied against a bill that I liked, or this, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't want to deal with them. Yeah. It's, it's a really slippery road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, it's a new day now. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new day. And I, I think that uh, Trump's byline from the standpoint, want to make America great again, is going to be on the responsibility of all of us. Mm -hmm. and so it's our gonna, republic. And it's, it's, all, it's our republic, and we're going to need the leadership aspect of it. Yep. But again, we, we need organized leadership. And that's one of the reasons why I like the idea of the Western Liberty Network aspect of it. I think it's a very important piece. So don't look at this from a negative standpoint. Uh, you know, hey, if there are opportunities. Some, there are opportunities out there, mm -hmm. and there are many of you out there might be activists, but you've got to be organized. You got to be an organized activist. We do have a system that we work with. That's why we don't we don't run around standing people on the on the wall, if you will, and then blowing them away. Bruce, I, I quote Benjamin Franklin all the time. Talk to him. Uh, when he came out of the Constitutional Convention, a woman came up to him and said, mm -hmm. "Dr. Franklin, what do we have? A monarchy or a republic?" And he said, you have a republic, madam, if you can keep it. Yeah. That is a challenge to each of us Today as especially. an individual. Yes. If we are to be a self-governing society, we have to take responsibility for our own governance. That means we have to be active. We have to be engaged. Mm -hmm. And if we abandon it, then we will fall to something less than our founders envisioned. And, you know, and, and, and just as a, as a follow-up on that same piece that you're talking about, when you think about Donald Trump, this guy wasn't even elected to dog catcher. Mm -mm. He just, but it had been world famous for decades. No, but, but regardless of that, there's a lot of other world famous people that's yeah. But the fact of the matter is, he went out and put it, put all of his marbles on the table and said, look, I've got to work if, if in fact I'm going to be able to maintain myself sure. and my family and eat contentiously yep. okay, in this particular country. He can go anywhere he wants to, et cetera. Well, all so, George Washington yeah. wanted to be was a farmer. I mean, granted, he was a general. Yep. But uh, you could say in the, in the 18th century, what qualifications did anybody have yeah. to run a republic the yeah. likes of which the world had never seen, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So um, I think that Donald Trump might, you know, they're he gonna open be, the door. There are going to be things that, that, that we like about him and things we don't like, and as a libertarian that's particularly true. But I think he may be a man for our times, somebody who can break uh, the, the establishment as it has been mm -hmm. and create room for something else to come up. And hopefully that'll be something that involves, uh, that promotes free minds and free markets. Well, no, no, as, as the old saying goes, no, no man's an island, right? Yep, that's, right. that's a fact aspect of it. So the idea is that, uh, again, like I said, we've been discussing uh, the Trump thing, as you can see, at, at first part of the, 
of the whole program, we were sort of like in a confused state too. So we need training. <laughs> <laughs> <Who's> confused? <laughs> oh, so confused? So, so, so we, we'll I'm use Western confused. Living and Network to organize our thoughts. So, so maybe the next time, maybe the next time we come about on, being confused. maybe the next time we come on, we'll be so organized and polished, if you will. You I'm got my always work? trying to be polished. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> these well, are taking issues. notes and everything. Not forgetting about everything, <laughs> but at the end of the day. Is it? Wait, wait, I look wait at my you plate. forgot to cross a T. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're going to have three plates sitting around here, and mine's not going to be empty. You're going to have food on yours. You're not going to have any, right? Or maybe uh, I'll go I've to Norm's I've kitchen. Had, I've, had, I've had enough food. I've had enough food. <laughs> but we all have to eat. I mean, yeah. I, I put in the link. I use that term all the time because I think that's really at the bottom line. That's what it's all it's about. It's bread and butter. It's sure. bread and Absolutely. butter. It's bread and butter. That's what it's all mm -hmm. about. And so, so this is some exciting time. I mean, this is, this is a historical time aspect of it. I mean, all due respect, we just had, we just got rid of the, we, well, not to get rid of, in all due respect, we had an African American who was president of the United. That was historical, mm -hmm. you know. And I would like very much to see a female, you know, a female run. I just like to have someone that's responsible enough to understand who we are and define what this. I was, you know, you know I, I would support a female running for office who cares as much about my rights as she does about her power. I that initially not Hillary Clinton. Well, your wife did, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> <would never run. laughs> I mean, my, I initially favored Carly <laughs> Fiorina among right. Republicans. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, one thing that's good about the Barack Obama presidency is that although racism is still a problem in our country, oh, yeah. his election demonstrates that there is no position in society oh, that did. a person cannot realistically aspire to. Yeah, yeah. And that is a leap forward that I think hasn't been really absorbed yet. Yeah, and that make sure we need we need to understand that, and we need to feel good about that piece. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to go forward. That's why we got to do the things we have to do. We want that leadership. The folks who are out there looking at. I mean, that the fact that he was a horrible president has no, nothing no, no. to do with the fact no, that he's there's black. There's no such thing as horrible. Yes, no, horrible. No. If you if you sign up to run for anything I don't today, know about that. check this out. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get any one of you to sign up to run to run for president. Oh, this is the first year I would have been able to actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, my point is, it's a difficult job. Trust me, it's a very difficult. Oh, what I love is seeing the pictures my, of the guys before my head, and after. I take my hat off to anybody. Anybody is willing to sign on the dotted line. <laughs> have right on the well, we've come to the end of the show. This has been Thank great, you, guys. Bruce. Appreciate this very, very much. Thank and you. again, don't forget Western Liberty Network. Hey, send your leadership, folks. Folks who are interested, <laughs> activists. What's that phone number again, real quick? Uh, my number, 503-970-1876, westernlibertynetwork.org. Sounds great. And don't try to prank call him. He'll call you right back. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> That's right. Well, sounds great, folks. And like I said, let's be involved. Let's get organized. And let's, 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 let's go keep forward. And as, as one would say, Success is when opportunity meets preparation. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's all at. Western Living Network, I'll see you there too. Take care. Have a good one.